Now, wait a minute. There is an elite core in this country that has dominated American society. Well, well their now. objective is to try to bring about a gradual transition in our society, a dissolving of sovereignty, and a moving steadily to the left on the political spectrum. Well, who are the they? Belief, the elitist groups that I mentioned, particularly key individuals and policymakers and the council. Is the International Monetary Fund part of it? The interview you're about to watch is a perfect example of what happens when a politician steps out of line. Larry McDonald was a U.S. politician who served as a Democratic member of the U.S. House of Representatives from 1975 to 1983. He represented Georgia's 7th Congressional District. Despite being a Democrat, McDonald was a conservative and a staunch opponent of communism. On September 1, 1983, Larry McDonald was aboard Korean Airlines Flight 007. The plane, a civilian Boeing 747, was en route from New York City to Seoul, South Korea, with 269 passengers and crew on board. All passengers and crew, including Larry McDonald himself, perished in the crash. The circumstances surrounding the downing of Korean Airlines Flight 007 are controversial at best. Others call it a false flag attack. But one thing's for sure, this was the last interview he ever gave. Mr. McDonald, I'm not a conspirator. Uh, I think even Buchanan would vouch for that. Uh, well, but you uh, are. Robert, Robert Wilson. Foreign relations. Robert Wilson. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I'm a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. Yeah, you, you, well, you've certainly. Well, it's, let me just tell you what Newsweek says that says this. The John Birch Society considers communism only one arm of a national of a master conspiracy in which socialist American insiders are plotting to establish world government. Now, it also says, and here's Director John McManus. That's your public relations director saying that former Secretary of State Alexander Haig and CIA Director William Casey are two of these master conspirators who are plotting to establish world government. Now, what do you say? You know, that kind of silly, asinine statement is what makes pe make people laugh at the John Birch Society. Well, Tom, I'm sure being a longstanding member of the Rockefeller Apparatus, uh, and as a member of the Council on Foreign Relations of Longstanding, you're fully aware that you, there is an elitist core in this country that has seen value in subsidizing communism, of protecting communism. It has? Sure. You're accusing me of subsidizing communism? No, no I'm saying because that. Because I happen to belong no, to a. No, to there a is an elite policy. core. That is no, wait a minute. There is an elite core in this country that has dominated American society. Well, I'm not one of them. Well, I mean, trilateral Commission. The Trilateral Commission. Council on Foreign, Council on Foreign Relations. They here's the they suppose. Well, let's face it. They have dominated the State Department for 40 years and uh, pretty much openly. All so. right, but what are they trying to do? Council well, their now? objective is to try to bring about a gradual transition in our society, a dissolving of sovereignty, and a moving steadily to the left on the political spectrum. Well, who are the they? Belief the elitist groups that I mentioned, particularly key individuals and policymakers and the Council is the on Foreign Relations. Is the International Monetary Fund part of this? Well, I would say the International Monetary Fund has certainly been set up for the purpose of facilitating that transfer of sovereignty and transfer of wealth on the road. Right, we elected Mr. Conservative. Let me just finish the point, right. because otherwise we'll have a lot of un unanswered questions. That you are looking at a group that has worked to bring about the dissolution of national sovereignty on the road to world government. And certainly, uh, you're familiar with the local professor, Carol Quigley, who has been part of your club, in which he admitted all this. And he said in his book, Tragedy and Hope, the only thing I disagree is that we've worked to keep it a secret. And you see Arthur Schlesinger, Jr., writing way back in 1947, says, yes, this is the hidden policy of America. But we can't tell the American public because they're too unsophisticated to see the who, value. What is the instrumentality of world government? government? What is the like, instrumentality? Well, what which you say about Arthur Fett? That's the silliest statement I ever heard. He well, never made anything like well, that. Well, let me suggest that you read the May-June issue of the Partisan Review of 1947, Tom, and you can read it for yourself. It's called... Well, that's that's said there was a conspiracy... Well, a conspiracy well, he didn't use communism? The, oh, no, he didn't use the word conspiracy. He said the objective well, was to... Well, let, me about, let me finish. I'll, I'll tell you. He said that the objective, the secret policy, which we can't tell the American public because they're not sophisticated enough to see the value, is that through a steady result of erosion of new deals, we bring the American society steadily to the left, All right. and through a sound concept of benign containment, we merge into the vital center of the socialist left. 
Those are his words, not mine. I think John Kennedy was a member of that conspiracy. No, no, let me ask you this. The uh, World Federalist Movement in the post-war era contained a lot of people who eventually broke with it, and a lot of people thought the UN in the post-war era looked toward world government. Sure. Indeed, they did, up until 48, 49. But a lot of them said, look, we were utopian. That's over and done with. We can't move. And a lot of them came in Kennedy's government. Uh, Schlesinger was in there when they were fighting uh, in Vietnam, launched the effort in Vietnam. Schlesinger was behind the Bay of Pigs. In other words, look, isn't there some move that occurred in the post-war era that now has been dissipated because nobody believes in the utopian ideal of world government anymore? Well, I think there are those that realize that moving straight from a prototype of the United Nations into world government perhaps is tactically impossible. But phasing out uh, increasingly national sovereignty into regional government uh, and phasing out sovereignties into international treaties in multiple areas. The whole, er area. the whole movement toward, quote, interdependence. Yeah. NATO is, uh, so, uh, is part of the conspiracy? Well, there are certainly elements in NATO. There are people in, uh, in NATO who are very strongly dedicated to the defense of the West. Uh, but at the same time, you find in NATO a steady dissolution. You find a growing weakness. There is a... Uh, NATO policy uh, dominated by State Department policies that uh, has not worked. Well, it's a regional grouping, and I think, therefore, it may be suspect by the John Birch Society. We're talking with Congressman Larry McDonald, who has recently been elevated, I guess, to chairmanship of the John Birch Society, succeeding uh, Robert Welsh. We'll be back in a minute. Congressman Larry McDonald, a Democrat from Georgia. Uh, Mr. McDonald, your, your predecessor believed that the PTA was too left-wing and that uh, the John Birch Society at one time tried to infiltrate it, or, or so he said. He used the word infiltrate. <laughs> now, are you still, is that part of your program now? Well, I think when the PTA comes out in this program for the test ban treaty and when the PTA comes out for gun control, it comes out for obviously national legislative programs that have been linked with liberaldom, uh, having nothing to do with education of our children. I think many people are wondering what in the world is the PTA doing, and that includes members of the John Birch Society. Well, I wonder about you. Uh, public. I wonder about you. I looked you up. You're, you're, you're the biggest joiner that I've ever seen in the world. You belong, as I counted them, to 67 organizations, among which are the National Rifle Association, the American Pistol and Revolver Association, the Committee for the Right to Keep and Bear Arms, the Second Amendment, Found Amendment Foundation, and the Citizens Committee for the Right to Keep and Bear Arms. Well, Tom, I think there's a real drive in this country to try to destroy the realization of our citizens that they have a fundamental constitutional right to keep and bear arms as the Constitution allows. And unfortunately, there are those in our society, including elements of the PTA nationally, not always locally by any stretch, but nationally, who would uh, believe that the federal government uh, should restrict the right of citizens to keep and bear arms. Let what me ask issue, you about uh, the, this conspiracy well, again. Well, you can take the issue of, of uh, the, one of the major problems of this country is inflation right. and the problems of the destruction of the dollar. And the fact of the matter is, in spite of promises of the contrary, uh, Reagan uh, has not moved to correct the deficiencies. We're now back to Keynes' well, do you think economics, that's, despite uh, comments to the contrary. Do you think that's a result of the conspiracy you mentioned? Is there somebody working on them to get the inflation so that so that this country will be weaker. Well, as a man who campaigned against elitism, as a man who in his campaign rhetoric said that he would not be having the Council on Foreign Relations trilateral types dominating his cabinet, he's got about 250 members of such in his administration. Well, let me ask members. you about Bill Casey. Now, I've known Bill. I've members. Of, known, of, of, the, of the trilateral commission. I've known Bill CFR Casey. In the administration. I've known Bill Casey, the director of CIA, since World War II. As a matter of fact, in World War II, he was my boss. Now, you, you, your uh, public relations director, the John Birch Society, says that Bill Casey is a part of this conspiracy. Well, let's face it, Bill Casey, before, before he became CIA, one of his big jobs was aiding in the transfer of technology and uh, goods and so forth to the Soviet Union, uh, helping the Camel River Project, the Export-Import Bank. Oh, helping the finance is the Export-Import Bank part of the conspiracy? I think the, I'm the whole drive the that the, the fact that the American people have been tapped steadily especially since World War II, to finance their enemies and to have the massive technology transfer to those uh, well, who I agree with you. You know that from the Braden Doctrine and the, and the agency, uh, which uh, you're very familiar with, and the feeling that uh, we must somehow subsidize the, quote, non-communist left. That's among our so-called allies. Braden was and in country after country, that turned out to be the communists, mm -hmm. the crypto-communists masquerading. Yeah, that's, as Mr. that's Mr. Mitterrand, who has taken the strongest position against the Russians of any Western European. Well, he was about to lose everything at the polls, and he had to show some sign. Uh, it's very difficult to say exactly how far that will be. Congressman McDonald, he's been using the term 
conspiracy. No, I didn't use it. For heaven's sake, Pat. The John Birch Society used it. I go through the tapes. <laughs> well, it is. Don't blame it on me. He used it. You've used it 45 times. That's right. They say this is a conspiracy. Right. I want to know what the conspiracy well, is. Yeah. I'm trying to find out who's in it and what agencies of government in it because I want to fight it along with you. You look That's like great. Tom. Let me tell you, Tom. <laughs> as, as a man, a member of the conspiracy, he's a member of the press. <laughs> let me ask you. He's used now. Mr. Braden's used for the 47th time the term conspiracy. <laughs> now, let me ask you seriously. When you use people like Casey, who is on the Council on Foreign Relations, David Rockefeller's Trilateral Committee Commission, what do you mean, or do you mean? Is that your term, the term conspiracy? Well, there are many different levels of the problem. But yes, the term has been used, the term of conspiracy. When you have a group of people... They, I mean, they're working actively, to... actively collaborating, and at the other end of that point of collaboration are communists, and on this end of the point of collaboration is Bill Casey and trilateralists and yeah. CFR. Oh, hey. You have people who are part of the elitist structure of this country that have dominated this country openly for 40 years. I know, but they're not. Is that a conspiracy? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. If people quietly working together for evil objectives, two or more, that by definition is a conspiracy. You have by their own admission. You look at the tragedy and hope by Professor Carol Quigley, who's a member of this elitist group. He says, sure, we've been working this. Sure, we've been collaborating with communism. Yes, we're working for a global accommodation. Yes, we're working for world government. The only thing I object to is that we have kept it a secret. And I think we've gone so far along, we should come out and say, I bet you a dollar and a half that Bill Casey doesn't know who Professor Quigley is. I don't. He's at Georgetown a number of years ago. He died a couple of years ago, and he wrote The Tragedy and Hope. He's a very noted member of, the, of your club, Tom. Tom, you've got to broaden your reading a little bit. That's right. I, I, I ought to do is read more about conspiracies, and that's why I'm interested in what Well, I'll tell you what, what you ought to do is go back and look at your founder, Edward Mandel House, because he wrote the book Philip Drew Administrator in Colonel England. House. Colonel House said that what he envisioned for the world was a world government along socialist lines as envisioned by Karl Marx. Now, that's, that's your leader. Uh -huh. Tom, so you got to go back to the beginning. Well, his leader was Woodrow Wilson. Do you think he was a communist? Oh, I think leader? Woodrow Wilson uh, was his follower. Uh, I think Edward Mandel House dominated Wilson, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Edward Mandel House, uh, that was, uh, we ought to make that clear. He was Colonel President House. Wilson's uh, principal. Alpha, Alpha Ego, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, so he is the he is the real villain from which all these conspiracies... Uh, no, 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 no. He is a major that? figure. Um, but there is, has been, unfortunately, in the West, uh, an element. Uh, there are good members in the Council on Foreign Relations, dedicated patriotic people. You've had Sproul Brayton, who was a member of the Council of Birch Society, Bill Buckley, and Council on Foreign Relations. You've got some dedicated people. But the driving forces have very clearly been willing to collaborate, subsidize, work for technology transfer for what they feel is some type of an accommodation and merger. And I, I submit this would be a disaster for the American Republic. Are there any in yes. Congress? Sure. I disagree with Congressman McDonald as the idea of conspiracy with you and your friends. I think it's more of a herding instinct. The direction you've been moving in, inertia right. carries you further and further. But I do think this. That slogan, get the U.S. out of the U.N. and the U.N. out of the U.S. looks better and better every day, doesn't it? Maybe they were ahead of their time on that one. No, Pat, I think we got to have uh, communications with the world, and the U.N. makes me mad, too, but uh, I don't think it's a part of the great conspiracy which extends from Bill Casey and Al Haig all the way to communism. Well, I think that uh, Larry McDonald's a patriot. I think he's wrong about the conspiracy, but he's probably less wrong about what he says about this country than the guy I'm talking to.